Hi, this is Curtis, and this is a video about how to connect a synthesizer such as a keyboard, a MIDI keyboard, to your computer. Specifically, I'm going to be connecting a Casio keyboard that's several years old that only has MIDI in, out, and through, and doesn't have a USB port to a computer, which of course nowadays doesn't have MIDI ins and outs by default. So the piece of technology you need to go in the middle of that to bridge that gap is uh, they make USB to MIDI converters or USB to MIDI cables that have a little converter box in the middle looks like this I got this one at a music store near where I live it was forty five dollars you could probably get them cheaper online I've seen a few places online where they're cheaper you might even just be able to get it off of eBay uh, cheaper than that this is uh, called Hosa technology that makes this and it's basically USB on one end and MIDI in and out on the other end and that's the only piece of technology you need really to make this work so I'm going to be connecting Casio keyboard to Sonar to my computer using a Sonar X1 producer so the first thing I'm going to do is turn on my keyboard and make sure everything's working this is this will be what you'll hear is the sound coming from the actual keyboard speakers and now I'm going to plug up both ends now of course the way this is and and, and each one may be different but uh, if you get a different type of cable but the what it's got labeled as out and in the two cables uh, you want to put them in the opposite ports you want to put the in, in into the out and the out into the in and and it may that may not make sense to some people uh, if you're if you're thinking about two pieces of uh, hardware that both have MIDI ins and outs you don't want to connect the MIDI in to the MIDI in and the MIDI out to the MIDI out you want to connect the MIDI in to the MIDI out and the MIDI out to the MIDI in that way you can go out of the keyboard into the computer and go out of the computer into the keyboard and so you actually Want, when it says in, you want to connect that cable into your out port, and where it says out, you want to connect that cable to your in port. And then connect the other end to a USB, which I'm doing now on my computer. It has already installed the drivers, uh, but it just pops up. It's plug and play, no software required. It installs the drivers in a few seconds, and then you're at this point. Now I'm going to open up a uh, MIDI file that I something I just something I've been working on something simple uh, to show you how everything works. So this is on our X1 producer, and uh, right now everything is routed to the GS wavetable synth and should continue to be. Uh, let's see if we hear anything. Okay, that is that's coming from my computer speakers using the general MIDI wavetable synth that is built into Windows. Now now that everything is connected you should see this little icon. If you don't see it you can you can go down here. I'm using Windows 7 and you can select it. You can go to customize and you can uh, go down here and find it and tell it to show you everything. Not just the notifications. You know show the icon and notifications and not don't want you don't want to hide it or anything you want to be able to see what's going on at all times and uh, right now it won't show anything when I play my keyboard but when everything is connected properly you will see data going in and out you'll see these these two lights lighting up which is your MIDI in and MIDI out uh, showing the activity right now there's no activity because they're not listening to each other that's about to change I'm I go to edit preferences and uh, when I first did this, I thought it was in devices. I thought I should see something else. Right, what you're seeing here is microphone in, and uh, this is uh, a TV tuner. Is all this is that's connected to my computer, and then speakers out. But actually, you want to go to MIDI devices, and you'll see that there's there's extra things here. Typically, what you would see is nothing in the inputs, and you would see Microsoft GS Wavetable Synth as the output, and that is your 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 general MIDI engine that comes with Windows and uh, that's the only thing that you would have now what you want to do in this case if you want to be able to control 
the computer and control MIDI activity with your keyboard and also control the keyboard with your MIDI activity on the computer in both directions, then you will want to select the USB converter as the input and the USB converter as the output and, and unselect your wavetable synth. And then hit OK. It's going to say we need a new device. You select the USB to MIDI. If you if you buy similar devices that, that are not exactly what I have, it should be the same basic principle. Uh, now, I sh when I when I hit play, instead of hearing through my computer speakers, the data should be sent. The MIDI data should be sent through the cable to the keyboard, and I should hear it through my keyboard speakers only. So let's check that and see if it works. Okay. Now that was from my keyboard speakers, not my computer speakers. So it has that's MIDI out of the computer into the keyboard. So now my keyboard has been used as the new general MIDI engine, if you will, uh, to play the MIDI notes. Now we want to go in the opposite direction. I'm going to make a track here. Track one has nothing on it. I'm going to solo it so that none of this other stuff. In fact, just to make it simple, I'm going to delete everything that we're not using and uh, just deal with this track. Volume's up. Everything seems to be good. Now what I'm going to do is hit record. Uh, that's, that does not start recording. That arms the track for recording. Uh, now I'm going to go to staff view so I can see what this is doing live. Here we go. Uh, and I want to make sure that this is working as is if I just draw things now see when I do that that's actually immediately being played on my keyboard speakers not through my computer speakers so my computer my my keyboard is actually my new MIDI device only so I'm going to select this and delete it now here's the nice thing that you can do once you have everything connected properly is this track is armed for recording and I can just hit R or I can click on this either way and I can start playing on my keyboard and you will see the staff fill up with MIDI notes live as I'm playing them and the notes will change over time because when it first starts out it may think maybe I'm playing a quarter note but then I hold the note down longer so it may, might change to a half note might change to a whole note might change to a dotted half note it's all live and so the notes are being edited in real time as I'm playing them and so you can actually see what's happening live which is something pretty pretty fun to watch sometimes I end up watching that instead of paying attention to what I'm doing when I'm trying to record something and I end up making a mistake Now I'm going to make a mistake on purpose while I do this so that I can show you something uh, I'm going to change just to make this simple I'm going to change the key signature this the, the song that I had open was in I'm not doing it right actually the song that I had open was uh, was in B flat and uh, I'm just going to change this to C just to make everything look is easier to see and everything uh, with the staff view now I should be able to play notes that's coming through my keyboard speakers and now I just hit record and I'm going to play this live and you'll see the notes being played live and this is the strength of what you can do with MIDI and a program like Sonar Now I'm going to stop. We're going to play that back. And of course I heard that all through my keyboard speakers. Now I'm going to hit play back and we'll see what that sounds like. should sound exactly the same.
Okay. That last note was obviously uh, wrong, and I played it so that you can see. Now I can change that note. I can drag it. And, uh, and now it's a different note. And so you can, you can play things, and then you can edit them after the fact. You can play them in real time, and then go back and edit them as you need to, or delete them in this case. I don't have a pedal with this keyboard at the moment. It's in uh, another room. But pedal shows up too, up underneath everything. It shows a little P for pedal and a little asterisk when the pedal goes off. And so you can actually see pedal data too, your damper pedal, your stain pedal, when, uh, when you're playing, when you're pressing the pedal down or not. So I hope this gives you a good idea of, of how to work everything. Uh, once you get done, if you want to not use your synthesizer or not use your keyboard anymore, you have to remember that if you disconnect anything, even if you've already closed out of Sonar, uh, you're, you're still going to have to go back. When you reopen Sonar, you're going to have to go back, and you're going to have to remap your inputs and outputs, or at least your output. Uh, you're going to have to go back to Edit Preferences, go back to MIDI Devices, and you're going to have to change this back to GS Wavetable Synth. If you have everything disconnected, you might not even see this or this or this. You might just see Microsoft GS Wavetable Synth as the output, and that's it. Uh, but if the keyboard isn't connected or whatever device you have if it's not connected later you still will probably have to manually make the wavetable synth your output again in order to hear any sound coming out of your speaker so you would have to go back to this situation and like I said those other ones might not even come up to begin with or they might uh, and of course I have to say wavetable synth as it comes up this might just come up to begin with and you won't even have to do this screen because this might pop up as soon as you try to hit play and if it does you can just say yes wavetable synth go back to that hit OK and now I should be able to hear it through my computer speakers again and that's my computer speakers so now the keyboard is completely out of the equation again uh, something that I wanted to mention earlier and forgot about was as I'm playing you can see the activity down here in this little icon you can see the MIDI out data and I've already disconnected the keyboard but if I had done this before I had disconnected it you would see when I was hitting play and you should be able to see it if you rewind the video actually while I was playing live you would see data going through the MIDI in or maybe even through both because sometimes it sends data out of the keyboard into the computer and then back out to the keyboard again uh, in case there are any effects or anything uh, so you while playing live you would probably see lights coming through MIDI in and MIDI out and then as you're playing it back you'll see the MIDI out light lighting up and that's good to have because if you have a problem if it's not playing like it should you think you should be hearing sound and you're not that gives you a little bit of troubleshooting if, if you're not seeing anything lighting up when when there's MIDI notes being played then you know there might be something wrong with the actual connection whereas if you do see or maybe the outputs or inputs are wrong or, or something whereas if you do see the lights lighting up but you don't hear sound it might be it's more likely to be something software related like uh, you've got something muted or you've got something soloed or you've got you know you've got the wrong the wrong bank or the wrong patch or, or uh, it's panned incorrectly you know something like that if you if you see light data that's telling you that MIDI information is actually being sent at least uh, and that the problem lies elsewhere so I hope this video gives you some indication of uh, how to do all this and if you like my videos please subscribe and I'll see you next time